Hello, everyone, and welcome to your top five to stay alive for July 2020. In a few days, we'll be celebrate, celebrating the 4th of July. And for you millennials and Generation Xers out there, that just doesn't mean blowing stuff up. <laughs> no, it means we're celebrating our independence from the English crown, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and all those patriots who laid down their lives so that we can experience the freedoms we have today. Shall we move on to top five to stay alive? This is topic number one. Back in 2018, I shared with you how corrupt and downright evil one of the biggest companies in the country truly is. For decades, Johnson & Johnson did everything in its power to convince you that nothing could be safer than its baby powder products. So we put it on our babies, our grandbabies' diapers, and we used it on our most intimate body parts, and not just once in a while. For some folks, baby powder has been part of the daily routine for years or even decades on end. But it turned out that Johnson & Johnson's baby powder doesn't just contain talc, a natural occurring mineral. It's also laced with a cancer-causing contaminant, one that its makers discovered all the way back in 1957 but hid in sealed documents for over 60 years. Without even a hint as to the sinister secret it was keeping, the company denied every allegation, even sending representatives to perjure themselves in a court of law. Now, the corporate giant is finally making a move it should have made a long time ago. It's a small victory for some, but I say it's too small compared to the number of lives that have been lost and the damage has been done after dragging generations of loyal customers into a pit of misery. Hit them where it hurts, they say, and for corporate America, that's right at the bottom line. Johnson & Johnson executives must be beside themselves as they watch their worst nightmare become reality. So many folks have been spooked by tens of thousands of lawsuits and an expose that ran a couple of years ago that baby powder sales have plummeted. People are taking any chances over allegations that the talc in baby powder is contaminated with asbestos, and rightly so. As we all know, there's no safe level to the exposure of asbestos. In fact, Sales have taken such a nosedive that Johnson & Johnson has announced it has discontinued its line of hundreds of baby powder products contained talc in the U.S. and Canada. Good, but not good enough. The company isn't recalling the potentially harmful talc-based products, though it did pull some product from retailers last year after the FDA found asbestos in a randomly obtained sample. It's only winding down its distribution, and it's still planning on selling them all off until the shelves are cleared. And that's not just in this country and our neighbors to the north. In the rest of the world, innocent people will continue to be exposed to the risk of talc. What makes it so wrong on so many levels is how unsealed documents show that Johnson & Johnson had documented the presence of asbestos and talc supply multiple times over several decades and yet it did nothing to warn the public or remove it from its products. Of course, those big wigs must have known that if truth about talc got out, they'd lose the crown jewel of the, their legacy and one that's been around for over 120 years. But the wheels were already set in motion back in 2018. By then, the company shares had already dropped by $40 billion and the company had to fork over $4.69 billion to ovarian cancer patients that year in one month alone. Johnson & Johnson CEO refused to admit any wrongdoing then, and subsequently the company even got some judgments, judgments overturned on appeal and other verdicts reduced. And it's not backing down in the courtroom. If you see baby powder on the shelves of your local market, make no mistake, just because they're selling, it doesn't mean it's safe. Fortunately, there are non-toxic alternatives to talc, which include cornstarch and baking soda. If you use talcum powder, or products like Johnson & Johnson's Shower to Shower sold off in 2012, don't ignore the signs of asbestos-related illnesses. If you already got a diagnosis of a disease implicated in baby powder, like cancer or mesothelioma, the next thing you should do is get yourself a lawyer and, and show these corporate fat cats no mercy. Topic number two, you may have thought you kept a clean house before, but given the current state of affairs, many of us, find ourselves stocking up on cleaning products like never before. And I'm not just talking about paper towels. 
The corporations that make disinfectant must be salivating over how much product they've been moving over the last couple of months. From bleaches to disinfectant sprays to antibacterial soap and hand sanitizers. We're trying to make our homes and cars as spick and span as can be. And so are the shops, churches, restaurants, and more. But what are we sacrificing to get surroundings that seemingly immaculate? Because some of these cleaners can actually do more harm than good. Fortunately, you don't have to choose between a sanitary environment and toxic fumes or sickening chemicals. I've shared with you before the dangers behind some of the most common cleaning agents, ones that are supposed to be making our lives better and safer. Take, for instance, triclosan. It's a chemical, even the FDA banned from antibacterial soaps and hand sanitizers, and that's been linked to bone loss and even osteoporosis. But the feds haven't removed it from toothpaste, and the EPA hasn't barred it from clothing, kitchenware, furniture, and toys that also contain it. Unfortunately, that's not the only germ killer out there that you've got to worry about. The overuse of antibacterials in general have been associated with the development of drug-resistant superbugs, a situation that's bad enough considering our excessive reliance on antibiotics to clear any and all infections. Topical antibacterials and antibiotics have something else in common too. They mess with your microbiome. While oral antibiotics disrupt the balance of good and bad bugs in your gut, sometimes robbing you of the natural defenses found in your gut flora, hand sanitizers, even the ones that contain only alcohol and no triclosan, can strip your skin of its microbiome. And that can make what's supposed to be your protective barrier more susceptible to germs and toxins. Even the ingredients and common disinfectant sprays uh, raise some concern over the ability to disrupt hormones, irritate your eyes and skin, promote difficulty breathing, and damage your DNA. You want to keep that stuff far away from your body, your food, your pets, even your clothing. Any kind of aerosol spray can release volatile organic compounds and other dangerous chemicals in its fumes, which have been linked to respiratory illnesses and asthma. Bleach may be the go-to for many looking to make their kitchens and baths spotless, but it can irritate your skin, eyes, nose, mouth, and throat. And you've got to make sure to keep it away from other household products like ammonia and vinegar so you don't gas yourself out of your house and home. That even includes using one product after another on the same surface and not necessarily just mixing them both in the same container. The EPA has published a list of products that meet the agency's safer choice standards, which you can browse on their website. You can also look for the safer choice label on the products themselves. But just remember, that what the feds consider safer isn't necessarily safe. Those products could contain plenty of other chemicals whose risks have been discovered, haven't been discovered yet. Fortunately, there are three non-toxic or less toxic cleaning solutions that pretty much everyone agrees carry the least amount of risk. Number one is vinegar. As long as you don't mix it with bleach, vinegar is safe bleach alternative when mixed with water in a one-to-one, one, one to three, one-to-one ratio. Hydrogen peroxide. It's so safe when diluted, you can use it on food, and a little goes a long way, and more isn't better. So make sure it's watered down to at least 3% concentration. And best of all, number three, soap and water. It's the old standby because it's the most effective when it comes to washing your hands and other parts of your body. And they're not talking about some crazy chemical lace soap, but plain old ivory. You can use bar soap, liquid hand soap, or even dish soap. But whichever you choose, it's safer and more effective than hand sanitizer. Now, don't underestimate the last one. If plain old soap and water is effective enough to use it on your body, you can use it on surfaces too. A little scrubbing with soap and water can be enough to give you peace of mind and an antiseptic countertop or floor you can eat off of. Topic number three. If your blood pressure numbers and heart rate are already healthy, you do, you do anything to keep it that way. But if you're thinking about how to do better by your cardiovascular health, especially if your blood vessels are weak or your blood vessel valves are damaged, your blood flow may be suffering. And that means tissues can be deprived of that crucial life-giving blood that they need to stay healthy and strong. But you can enhance your circulation and support your heart health thanks to a secret discovered in France over 70 years ago. It has to do with tiny ingredients that are thrown away during the process of making your favorite Bordeaux or Cabernet. And what is it is may surprise you. Since ancient Greece, folks have treasured grapes for their medicinal benefits. 
Now, you may have heard about the French paradox, which scientists have attributed to nutrients in the skins of red grape that are turned into wine. But there's an underappreciated part of the vineyard fruit, and it could be the, the blood flow hero you're looking for. I'm talking about the seeds of the grape, a.k.a. grape seed. In 1947, French plant expert Jack Mosquela discovered how to extract active compounds from grape trees, ones that could benefit vessel health all the way down to the tiniest capillaries in the human body. And grapeseed extract has been extremely studied over the last seven decades. The most important ones turned out to be a flavonoid called oligomeric proanthocyanidins, better known as OPCs. <clears throat> OPCs are notorious as potent free radical scavengers, giving grapeseed extract the antioxidant power to benefit numerous kinds of tissue in your body, especially your vessels. According to research, OPCs can help improve blood pressure by increasing nitric oxide production, blood vessel strength by inhibiting enzymes that break down collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid, and circulation, especially in the extremities, by widening blood vessels and making them more relaxed and flexible. The result, according to a meta-analysis out of Yale, grapeseed extract significantly lowers two vital stats in the human body systolic blood pressure, the top number, and your heart rate. Recommended dosages range from 100 to 300 milligrams daily, although up to 600 milligrams daily has been shown to be safe for most folks to take. Because OPCs can thin your blood, beware of combining them with aspirin therapy or blood thinning prescription meds. And for an even profound effect, combine it with the heart healthy compound found in the gray skins known as resveratrol. And if you ever check the back of a Cardio for Life jar, you'd see listed in supplemental packs both resveratrol and grapeseed extract. That's why I believe Cardio for Life will combined with other great, great in, the other great ingredients does such a good job in establishing a finely tuned heart and vascular system. Topic number four, allergies seem to be getting worse, and they're not just limiting, limited to spring anymore. More people are, are more miserable for more of the year, including the right now in the summer when allergies used to tail off a little bit. Not in New York. But of course, the drug company, a drug industry, seizes the chance to push more sales of more drugs. And today, I've got the scoop on another more they hope you never hear about, as the FDA has delivered a warning over the common allergy drug. Turns out it has more risks that you've been led to believe. But don't worry, I've got a way to get more relief right when you need it. Earlier this year, AccuWeather warned that 2020 allergy season would start sooner and last longer. Worse yet, folks who uh, have grass allergies in particular would, will face a long and severe season into the summer. It's not the, just the grass, the rest are worse than ever too. In some parts of the country, ragweed season is now 25 days longer than it used to be. That explosion of allergies had led to an explosive market for medication and not just for antihistamines. More than 30 million Americans now take a prescription-based anti-inflammatory drug known as Singular. The FDA is frightening new alert for all 30 million of them. Turns out the price of, of, of a breath of fresh mucus-free air could be, are you ready for it? Suicide. They've added a black box warning to the drug's packaging over the risk, even though nobody reads that, and they're telling doctors to stop giving it out so quickly and easily. They now say the drug shouldn't be first option, especially for people with allergies and especially for people with mild sim symptoms. But guess what? It's never should have been anyone's first choice for allergies in the first place, and it certainly never should have gone into widespread use like this. This risk isn't new. This drug has a long and scary history of doing weird things to your brain and not just causing suicidal thoughts or action. It can lead to depression, aggression, nightmares, headaches, and even more severe neuropsychiatric symptoms. Call me crazy, but there's no need for any of that. Not when studies show other ways to ease the worst of allergy season. Even if you seem to have allergies in every, every season, you can try these four simple tricks. Number one, tweak your diet. Processed foods can make allergies worse, and gluten in particular can stimulate mucus to enhance the misery. On the flip side, spicy foods can clear mucus, and local honey can help you build tolerance to local pollens. Purify your air. Get a good air purifier with a HEPA uh, filter and use it in spring, summer, or whenever allergies strike. 
Some have specific allergy setting to suck in pollen. Just remember to change the filter. And then finally, go herbal. Natural therapies, including nettle, golden seal, butterbur, and astrologus can help. I have found that MSM, better known as methyl siphonium methane, cured my allergies from ragweed and tree buds. I started taking it some 30, 40 years ago, and I've never had another uh, reaction during the summer or spring when the trees bud. So it works. MSM, 3,000 milligrams twice a day. Finally, topic number five. You've done everything right, everything they've told you to do to keep your blood flowing free and easy through your body. Nothing will stand in the way. Blood clots, nope, you're taking blood thinners. Cholesterol globs blocking your arteries, never, you're taking stands. But the latest research shows how in spite of taking these meds, you're not in the clear, not by a long shot. There's a scary new warning for folks who are a little on the older side. And if you're taking an anticoagulant or cholesterol lowering drugs, here's what you could be up against. A just out studied published in JAMA, uh, Journal of American Medicine and Neurology, blows the lid off a dark secret that big pharma and mainstream medicine never wanted you to find out. It has to do with a common certain type of brain bleed has become over the last few decades. And, what, and most importantly, why? I'm talking about an intracerebral hemorrhage, ICH, a potentially lethal type of stroke. In the years between 2000 and 2016, the incident of ICH tripled from the rates recorded between 1948 and 1986. In folks 85 or older, it increased nearly sevenfold between those two time periods. This isn't for a lack of quality medical care. In fact, the participants in the Farmington Heart Study got everything the mainstream had to offer. Unfortunately, that means one thing, a lot of drugs. Previous research has shown how very low LDL cholesterol numbers are associated with a higher risk of ICH. Now, LDL is, is reportedly the bad kind of cholesterol. Most doctors would tell you to try to get your levels as low as possible. And this latest research shows just how wrong they can be. The use of cholesterol-lowering statins, the only way to get the LDL numbers at rock bottom levels, was linked to a higher incidence of deep ICH or bleeds occurring in the innermost parts portions of the brain. I'm talking about the basal ganglia, which, which controls motor function, and the thalamus, which acts as a relay center for sensory signals. Trust me, you don't want to miss, mess with ICH. You might not come out of it alive, and if you do, you, sh you could be severely disabled. Now, the latest study, study also found that hypertension to be associated with the higher incidence of both deep, deep and low bar ICH. And that goes right along with conventional practice, which dictates that you should take blood pressure meds to keep the ICH risk at bay. But the science says otherwise. Blood thinners may beat back ischemic stroke caused by a blood clot uh, blockage, but these drugs are actually associated with a higher risk of hemorrhagic stroke. Worse yet, a 2018 study found that ICH patients who'd previously used an anticoagulant meds were more likely to die in the hospital. Listen, it's possible that blood pressure numbers and your cholesterol level are just fine where they are. Find a doctor who will look at your overall health instead of playing the numbers game to get you on more drugs. And if your blood pressure or cholesterol could use a little help uh, getting into an optimal range, try natural solutions first. Look for a circulation support formula to promote healthy blood flow. Or, or kill two birds with one stone by supplementing with Cardio for Life. This all-natural supplement can help you control your blood pressure and your cholesterol, and it still has an anticoagulant effect, even better. It can help reduce the damage if stroke does strike. And now moving on to the favorite part of today's top five testimonials. Dr. Harry, I've been using Cardio for Life for the past six years. I researched heart disease and found information on L-arginine and L-citrulline and how the correct balance was shown to reduce the risk of heart attack and long-term coronary artery disease. There are other supplemental methods, but I found Cardio for Life has the proper amounts and several other vital, vital vitamins and nutrients. I started supplementing with Cardio for Life as I was having chest pains when climbing stairs or exercising. They were mild, but there. After a few months of taking this product, they went away and haven't returned. I now exercise daily 
And as a 63-year-old male, it is important to do cardio exercise. I cycle. I get my heart rate up to 150 beats per minute for at least 20 minutes a day without issue. Thanks for this wonderful product. In my opinion and experience, Cardio for Life is an outstanding product, which I rely on daily. Well, thanks for that, Robert. Number two, it's the next to impossible to find a good heart health supplement these days for any amount of money, not only with proper ratios, ingredients, and no poisons. A friend told me about Dr. Harry's product some years back. I've used it ever since. It's a clean product with proper ratios of ingredients, quite necessary for these kinds of hard formulas to work, but hard to find, especially one that does not have crappy ingredients. It's also quite a pleasure to have the warm interactions with Dr. Harry himself, who is full of knowledge and quite personal. Thanks for that, Blake. And finally, testimony number three, Dr. Harry always shares insightful information which lead you to a better health. I look forward to his monthly top five to stay alive. Cardio for Life is an amazing product that contains vital ingredients for improving cardiac function. Well, thanks for that, Val. And that concludes our top five to stay alive. Remember, be safe this holiday. If you get out there and, you know, wear a mask, nah. But be safe. Count your digits at the end of the 4th of July. Make sure you got them all. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. God bless you all. This is Dr. Harry saying good day.